Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Once upon a time in Mexico, movie thoughts. So first I want to bitch a bit about the two new mariachis. I already talked about in the review itself the terrible acting. Their guitar case weapons, however, might actually bother me even more. You've got a flamethrower, an extremely short-range weapon, and he uses it only once, of course. You know, and then you've got a bomb on wheels. This, it, he could only use that once, and just you know, could he not have taken out the truck with you know? Obviously, using a rocket launcher again might have been, you know, a bit repetitive, although that doesn't seem to bother him for the rest of the action. I don't know, you know, the thing is, how do you really top dual machine guns and a rocket launcher? Time's up, you don't, you just don't even try. He should have just left it where it was. If they had never actually shown to have guitar case weaponry, if they had just run around with the pistols, would that not have been fine? What was the point of the, oh, have you heard of armor-piercing bullets? These are even better. He shot people who weren't wearing armor. He didn't shoot, a, like, a car or something. He didn't need, you know, it, it, actually, it's a bit of a waste of bullets if those are, like, really, you know, very, very powerful. Why did, you know... Jorge, or whatever his name was, the FBI dude, not check his pistol before he was out on mission. You know, is he that rusty? The... The personalities of the two mariachis are even worse. You know, just the, oh, I'm greedy, oh, I'm drunk. Are we supposed to care? You know, Campa and Kino never say a word. Just, you know, they're, they're, they're just blank slates, you know, they're mysterious, like navajas. You should have just kept it like that, you know, not every character needs to have this, you know, filled in blank, filled in slots of, you know, personality or character, especially if that's what you're going to come up with. Now, to be a bit positive about the movie, I do love Johnny Depp in it. Uh, that is... Especially those last couple of scenes, you know, although I do wonder why he's the only one to get his eyes cut out when Jorge seemed to be in about the same situation and If Eva Mendez was just gonna kill him anyway, then why not kill him and whatever Applying logic to this trilogy is a wasteful effort but yes, the, you know, he, he loses his eyes, and he's just running around disoriented, and he meets up with the kid, you know, and he should be careful with, you know, what he wishes for, because he got his wish. I don't ever want to see you again, you know, so, although the, the sight gags, I suppose you could say, if you wanted to be really punny, do get really old. But yes, once he, you know, and he grabs the kid and he's like, okay, I'm sorry about your your gum, you know, I'm sorry about your chicleta. I liked how much Spanish was spoken in this, that was pretty good, you know. Nice, you know, Mexican-Spanish flavor to it further. And then he like, you know, bumps his head into the thing and he's like, okay, I need you to be my eyes because I can't see anymore and I will give you this, you know, and the kid's like, is un dollar, you know, that's just one dollar. Okay, take two, I'm giving you this, you know, all this money. So, and, you know, he meets that first guy, and it's like, okay, shoot him. Shoot him. And the kid's like, no, no, I, 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 don't, I think that's the one bit that the subtitling doesn't translate. I don't speak Spanish, so yeah, he says something, you know. 
and the Depp is like, okay, and he's just trying to listen for him, and, you know, the, the scene's really well edited. I wish there, were, there was more of this, you know. Actually, if someone would just re-edit the Johnny Depp scenes into one short film, I think that would actually be much more entertaining as a whole than this entire movie. But, you know, he's just like... Uh, I can't quite tell where the other guy is, and he grabs this one guy, and it's just like this random by bystander, you know, and the kid's standing over the wrong guy, and, you know, the the dude's aiming at the kid, and, you know, Depp throws down the gun and says, okay, just look into my eyes, and then kill me, you know, and the guy's like, <gasps> and, you know, the kid kicks the pistol, no, no, wait, he picks it up and throws it to, whatever, Depp gets the pistol back, gets shot in the shoulder, shoots the guy in the head, that's it, you know. And the kid picks up all this, you know, the the belts and everything, and he, you know, he goes to the, you know, in front of the, I guess, the presidential building, and, you know, gets the, the belt and, you know, the submachine gun. It really is too bad that he doesn't use any of the pistols, now that I think about it. He only uses the submachine gun, which... I still have no idea where he got because it wasn't the other guy who, you know, he didn't, he used the regular pistol and the, you know, holsters, holsters seem to only hold pistols, but whatever. He has a submachine gun, I can live with that. And, you know, he shoots everywhere but the two guys, you know, it's actually like the Tarantino joke in Desperado. Everywhere except the goal, you know, and they're laughing and... Just the moment that they start laughing, you know, the audience, even the first time watching it, you're like, they're going to get messed up now. Because you just, you know, the moment, and then it instantly, you know, cuts to his ears, and he's like, ah, that's where they are. And he shoots at them, and gets, like, one of them in the leg, and, you know, then he hears him screaming because of the pain in his leg, and he shoots him in the head, because then he's shooting down the sound again. And the other one is, like, walking closer, and he shoots him in the foot, and then he kills him, you know. Excellently done. And, no, I, too, have no clue how he got his, you know, prosthetic arm down there. The, no clue whatsoever. And how he got it on there, and all that. But it is a nice little bit where he actually manages to kill her. And, you know, she's like, uh, see anything you like? And he's like, no. Now... I, I will not be commenting particularly on, you know, all the <sighs> switching of sides because I'm just, honestly, I can't, I can't follow it. And I don't care to because I don't, I, I don't know, maybe some people take it as a challenge and maybe that's what Rodriguez intended or maybe he just wanted to confuse the crap out of people. I don't know. I don't particularly care. One of the few I will comment on is, you know, Kukui, I think is the, the name. You know, the Danny Trejo character. I don't know why it's him specifically I connect this bit of information with, but when he dies, maybe it's that at that point in the commentary track, Rodriguez informs us that this didn't need to happen, but once a character had served their purpose in this particular film, I think it's somewhat true of Desperado, but in that one, the deaths sort of have meaning or they, they make an impact. And I'm not going to spoil what I'm talking about, for those who haven't seen the, that movie. But in this, you know, it just is, well, that character is no longer necessary, let's just kill him off. You know, Kukui didn't need to die, and then there are, yeah, just various characters didn't need to die, but they're just... I'm not even, I don't even particularly remember. I guess Mickey Rourke died there at the end because we don't see him after he gets shot, although plenty of people survive being shot in this movie. You know, I'm not sure he was shot quite as bad as El Mariachi was in that flashback. But, yeah, just, excuse me. I will say the plot, excuse me, the, the plan with hiding Barilio with kind of just, you know, basically surgically altering his appearance and then having someone die that looked a lot like him. You know, you might not realize the first time you watch it that that's what that 
guy is hired for, you know, that's why the doctor, and when you first see the doctor, you don't know that he's a doctor at all, and you don't know about the, the whole plan, but, I don't know, it is maybe a little obvious, maybe he made it very obvious intentionally so that people might still be able to piece together, but, yeah, he's the guy who was, you know, on the operating table, the, the young guy who does not speak English, who, uh, you know, actually, when... Again, applying logic, but I can't help it. <sighs> you know, the Mickey Rourke character comes right out and says to him, you know, I really hate working for these people. And then he's like, you don't speak English, do you? So you don't understand what I just said. Okay, good. You know, because what if he had spoken English, you know? But anyway. <sighs> the but, but yeah, I guess Mickey Rourke does die from that gunshot, saving, I guess it's supposed to be saving the FBI guy, even though he, I don't know, actually the way it's edited, it seems more like he just turns around so he's not shot in the chest, but in the back instead. I think he's supposed to do like, the or be about to do the Secret Service dive in front of the FBI guy, but yeah, it just really doesn't come across that way. I do think that this does a nice enough job of sort of building up, you know, the that that El Mariachi has been out of it for a long time and he doesn't want to go back, you know. That I think it did a pretty good job on. Yeah, I'm not sure there's terribly much else. Well, I do wonder how the Mexican people are just suddenly fighting so fiercely there at the end. You know, I I don't know, I guess it's a nationalist thing that like, you know, there's a, Rodriguez is saying, you know, if Mexico was attacked, you know, the Mexican people would rise and defend it, you know. And I like that this one actually does have a little bit more sort of nuance to it than Desperado overall. I don't know, maybe not, actually. But, I don't know, it, it does have that sort of thing of, you know... I don't know, it feels like a little bit more nuance. I could be wrong, actually. But... The... But, but yeah, they're just suddenly... I mean, one thing is that they're, like, grabbing the guns of the, you know, dead military or whatever, you know, and actually in the military scene, I personally think it could have been made clearer who are the president's guards and who are, you know, the the men of, you know, general, the general, I don't know his name. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that one or two guards suddenly just disappear. When, when El Mariachi is walking towards, you know, just when the president finds out that his helper is actually, you know, betraying him. There are like, there are a bunch of guards around. El Mariachi goes up and he knocks two of them out. You know, and then there are, there are at least two, there might even be three, in front of him. He raises his, I'm pretty sure it's the sawed off, fires it, once, you see one guy flying away. It cuts, and then the other two are just gone. You know, he actually, he walks slowly forward and then, you know, reloads the gun, even though there was another shell in there. You know, he was ready to, f you know, fire it again. But yeah, it just... Anyway. I guess the ending with the, you know, what do you want from life? To be free. Simple. No. I guess what he's saying is, you know, that by the end he is free from wanting revenge or something, or that he's, I don't know, I, dude, that's all I got. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.